One, go. Oh, perfect. All right, my name is Joey. Here's my capstone on my uh, future career being a uh, heavy equipment operator. So we'll start off with the career description. What is a heavy machine operator? Well, a heavy machine operator drives, controls, uh, construction equipment, including bulldozer, bulldozers, forklifts, backhoes, you name it. They operate this equipment to assist the uh, construction of structures, including bridges, roads, buildings, or other jobs. Heavy equipment operators are also needed on nearly every major job site and also in high demand because of specialized training and years of apprenticeship need to be fully certified to operate such heavy machinery. And this uh, career can be found in the architectural and construction cluster. And other jobs found alongside it are there any different. It's a long truck. <laughs> Other jobs that kind of here can be skilled to skilled labor and trades jobs, anything from a plumber to a boiler operator can be found here. And a common theme amongst these jobs in the career cluster is that men demand nature of these careers. And some of the responsibilities along a uh, heavy machine operator can start from you know operating heavy machine in compliance with the company's operating safety, and uh, you know loading and unloading equipment from vehicles and trailers to, uh, you know, completing the required paperwork and reporting other documentation. There's also some transferable skills that go along with this career, which start from, you know, hand foot coordination, operating, operation monitoring, troubleshooting, critical thinking, and interpersonal skills and teamwork. My interest about this career, you know, I've been interested in this career because I've always been intrigued with machinery since a little kid. I've already had experience running some pieces of equipment and would like to make a career out of it. I also enjoy running these machines to a point it could almost be a hobby. I'm working for some construction companies already. I've had many opportunities to see many different aspects of the job options in the trade. There's also employment options that range from boring to incredibly extreme. The needed values for this career you know, are um, you know, maintaining a high level of integrity and ethical values, being accountable for uh, your actions and delivering the right result the first time, uh, practicing mutual respect and civility, and being a good neighbor and providing a positive contribution to our community. The education and training for this job start off with the high school classes. The high school classes that you are recommended to take for this uh, job are, you know, the shop classes, basic shop classes, uh, mechanic or automotive classes, basic math classes, and like auto technology courses. Uh, level education, uh, in order to get into this career, you need to finish high school, or you can also get a certificate or associate's degree in heavy machinery or equipment operation. But it is optional for some people. Alongside schooling, you'll need, typically need to go through an apprenticeship program as trades industries progress. More and more companies, provinces, and countries are putting laws in place regarding the amount of training needed to be considered a skilled tradesperson. As well as training can help develop skills you wouldn't typically think of needing. Working as, with an experienced tradesperson can develop your ability to work well with others, communicate, listen to, and instruct an ability to make good judgments. The years of training and education for this job, you know, to be considered to be fully qualified in this field take anywhere from five to eight years of post-secondary education. However, unlike many jobs, these years of education are often paying for themselves as you work under a more skilled tradesperson as you're getting paid to do so. You make money and you learn at the same time. One of the uh, schools that I want to go to is uh, BIU or Vancouver Island University. And it's one of the best universities in BC for what I want to do, as far as I know. <coughs> and as well as it offers the courses that I would need to become certified to run machinery. The admission requirements for this school, uh, some of the requirements include you know, assessment testing, an interview may be required. You, know, you need good health, free of vision, hearing, or respiratory problems. You need to be at least 18. You need to be uh, at least graduated from grade 12 or the equivalent to it. A class 5 driver's license. And you need to be physically fit and adapt to the rugged working conditions. The apprenticeships you need will uh, typically need about 1,500 hours of job training with a certified tradesperson. And we need Salary and responsibility for these jobs. So the salary can start at, as you see, thirty-five grand a year and up to eighty-six thousand a year, which you know, after a while, you can get there. And uh, these jobs, there's some of the listings for them. And uh, community and finance. Where these jobs are found? Well, the most job opportunities can be found in Northern Territories, PEI, BC, and Nova Scotia. 
However, as most, with most trade job, uh, job opportunities are practically everywhere. The labor shortages persisting for the last few years, and the trend is expected to continue well in the upcoming decade. There are many places in Canada hiring heavy equipment operators, and heavy equipment operator jobs are heavily tied to the economy. When there is money to spare, cities will expand their infrastructure, building bridges and skyscrapers, and much more. However, if the market takes a downturn and projects are forced to halt, job options are quickly to dry out. But the most stable way to secure a long-term career is either by working for a major construction company or starting one of your own. Now, where I'd like to live, well, ideally I'd like to spend time working up north, and uh, none of it is home to the highest paying jobs by far, even if it is miserable to work there. I think I could get through it for a decade or so and save money to return to BC and start my own company, because no one wants to live in none of it. There are monetary government benefits living there, and the territory is a zone A for tax purposes. Essentially, the income tax and none of it is significantly lower than anyone else, anywhere else in Canada. Food can run up more expensive up north, however, essentials like fruits and veggies are typically the same price as they are in BC. There's always benefits and hazards to a job, and some of the benefits and drawbacks to running equipment. I'll list off some of the pros first. There's many job openings, it's a rapidly expanding market, there's high pay, uh, you're always outdoors, there's lots of fresh air, you get to learn and do new tasks every day, you get to learn something new every day, well, maybe not every day, but most days. Uh, there's always short post-secondary education, there's always room to grow your business, and you get to meet very many different people on the sites. But some of the cons can list from you know the extreme work conditions, you're very exposed to the elements, it can be a stressful environment, you, have, you might have to work long hours on certain jobs. Uh, some projects you know, are often far away from families. There could always be some co-worker drama if someone's not doing their job right. Uh, there's always a lot of hard work involved and there's gonna be a lot of apprenticeship needed. Some of the work safe features of this job is that it's always a dangerous career. There's always constantly, there's constantly different things going on that can result in severe injuries and even death at one point. In eight months in 2015, seven people were killed while operating heavy machinery, but most jobs are caused by people being stuck between moving equipment and crushed by equipment, electrocution, and being stuck or struck by inadequately secured cargo. Harm could be always be prevented by ensuring machines are properly maintained, used per the manufacturer's manuals, and always operated by a tradesperson and in all compliance with all regulatory requirements. So while heavy equipment can be incredibly dangerous with adequate care and, tra care and training, Many injuries are very preventable. Work environment. Well, uh, the environment of a heavy machine operator is you know, the standard work week is 40 hours over a period of five days, you know, eight hours a day. However, as with uh, many construction jobs, there are peak times that employers will require you to put in extra hours. The number of additional hours you work varies from job to job and depends on the region and type of work that's being done. Working outdoors, well, heavy equipment operators expire to you to work in all kinds of weather, doesn't matter what, from extreme heat, sub-zero temperatures, if there's work to be done, you're expected to do whatever your ability is, no matter what the weather says. And some of the problems and priorities is, you know, biggest concerns on the job sites is safety, as always mentioned before. When accidents happen with heavy equipment, you can have very grave consequences, and one of the number one problems that comes up is effectively and efficiently versus safety. It can be tempting to rush a project to skip tying down a large box as you transport it across the site or any number of seemingly reductive things. However, if coworkers assume that you do it all the time, it's far better to spend an extra 10 minutes being safe than 10 weeks in the hospital. Well, my board of directors, you guys, my motivators, all the people that invited my capstone today have always been there and helped me decide on what I want to do with my life and what career I want to end up pursuing. They've always been supportive of me and just helped me shape everything together for the future. And that was that. Yay! Yay.